Hi, welcome back to the serving board series. Today, I'm gonna smear cheese all over a serving board for science. serving board series. Yes. Today we're gonna conquer finishing. So basically we're using this as an opportunity to learn this experiment and see if our shop is set up correctly to do a large batch number of things and to also just nail down a part of our business that's really gonna be the gateway to everything else that we wanna sell. That starts with these cutting and serving boards we're gonna to sell to realtors. So today we're gonna to conquer finishing. If you've watched our last video, we talked about sanding and this is one of the boards that we finished to 220 grit and then we just let the finish fill in all the gaps. Sanding really doesn't do a whole lot for the feel or look of the finish past 220. So we need to find a finish that's easy. Let's just go to the whiteboard. We'll talk about it. All right, so we're gonna define what the best finish means for us. And basically, we want it to meet all these requirements on our list of priorities. So we definitely want the finish to be food safe. So all finishes are food safe once they've completely cured. The only thing that's risky or we're gonna get in trouble is using finishes that don't fully cure. However, to avoid that completely, we're just choosing to use ingredients that are plant-based, food-based, all natural products, which for us is gonna be an off-the-shelf food safe finish or just beeswax and mineral oil. And second, we want the finish to be long lasting. We want it to be durable. We want the client to be able to wash it a few times, use it a lot. And we're also taking into account that they're probably not gonna take care of it the way we would or the best way to take care of it. We're thinking they're gonna scrub it really hard. It may get thrown in the dishwasher, all sorts of stuff like that. So we want it to last as long as possible, despite the fact that they're probably not gonna take care of it the best way. And third, we need it to be easy to apply. This is just for us. Like it's gotta be easy to finish these boards. We want it to be fast. We wanna be able to put it into a checklist and easily teach somebody else how to be able to do it. This needs to be a one step finish. We don't want something where it soaks for a long time. We put it in, come back, put it in, come back. We don't wanna buff anything out. We just want it to be a one step complete finish. All right, fourth, it needs to fill gaps and be smooth. And when we say fill gaps, we mean all the itty bitty little divots. We want all of that to be filled in by our finish so that it has a really smooth surface. So you saw in our last video that we're only gonna sand them to 220. So we need a finish that's gonna fill in any of those scratches and gaps and make it feel silky smooth. And last but not least, it needs to stay solid at warmer temperatures. That means room temperature or above. So these boards may be in warm cars before they get delivered, or they may be mailed. Basically, we don't want the finish to melt or sweat off when they're not sitting in a perfectly climate controlled kitchen. So once we're able to check all of these off, we'll know that we found our perfect finish. So before we get into the kitchen and start making our own board butter, we're gonna- Sand away. Sand away. So uh, we, did, we did a crap job of explaining this. This yeah. is our experiment. My college professors would be highly disappointed. This is our control. Yes. It's boring, it's rectangle. That's how we know it's the control. It's gonna be sanded and that's pretty much it. Yep, so it's just gonna be sanded and it's gonna be raw wood. This is the most normal looking board. It's just got a tiny cor 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 corner. Yeah, a little corner so you can hold your serving board like that. So it's the most normal looking one, i.e. our normal finish. This one looks funky. It looks like a bear snout. I don't know, what else does it look you like? You are creative today, aren't you? It, looks, yeah, it just looks like a little bear. Like, see, his eye would be right there. It could also look like, like his like tail. A... That's a little tail sticking up and that's his butt. <laughs> There's your cheese. This is gonna be the funky one, which is our new concoction that we're testing. Yes, so that's how we'll know. We have walrus oil, but again, it's too thin. They sell wax, but I think, based on the ingredients mm -hmm. list, I think that we could make our own wax at our own consistency 
for way, way cheaper. Yes. And we can control the application process as well. So yes. um, Walrus Soil, we're gonna use off the shelf as a filler for when we engrave the boards. That just makes it so much easier because then you're not digging wax out of little crevices from letters, designs, yep. whatever. You, you just pour just... this on a little yeah. bit and then just let it sit for a few seconds while you're using your butter stick yep. for the rest of the board. Uh, we just watched the video, Jonathan J. Katz Moses has his version of it, which mm -hmm. is called, what do you call it, goo or something? Yeah. Uh, That's Moses it's a four. Moses. It's a four to one ratio, so four parts mineral oil to beeswax. This one's already finished with what we normally use, and that is this. This is a three to one mixture. It's three parts mineral oil to one part beeswax. We got this recipe from Mark, our buddy Gunflint Designs, and these are really nice. It's it's a nice consistency. I don't really know. Here, I'll try to show it you. It seems like everybody kind of has their own combination of it or their own. So I mean, like it's I would call it semi-solid. It's like if you've ever had like room temperature butter. Yeah. It's I don't know. It's kind of squishy. I don't know if you can see. Still feels very oily though. <clears throat> I would say this three to one ratio is the same consistency as. Cracker barrel butter, <laughs> for reference. It's very specific, we know, but ew, ew, that was gross. That's good. We want something a little more solid, I think, mm -hmm. than something like Maybe, this. Maybe, yeah, this. more waxy, I guess. Yeah, um, I still want it to be like butter consistency, but more like refrigerated butter consistency. The in between, you can't quite make cookies with it yet because it hasn't softened enough, but you're impatient and do it anyways and it goes poorly, that kind. No, don't do that. We'll wash it. So, get a closed section of the grain here. Oh, that's perfect. Look at like that. Like butter. <laughs> like butter. Yeah, that's the yeah, perfect Yeah, that's a really good consistency, actually. So if we could get something like this in a stick, it'd be like a glue huh. stick in kindergarten. So we could just like yeah, stick it on. Yeah, that would work too. And then just buff it out with a rag immediately. We don't have to let it dry or cure or anything. Yeah. So I'm gonna go wash this off. And now we know that's the consistency we're shooting for. So we'll try different ratios. Let's just but put butter on the board. Yeah, that'll it's never go safe. rancid. <laughs> So our finish is solid, ready to go. Um, if you remember what we said earlier for the boards, this is our control board. Nothing has been done to this except sanding. So what I'm gonna do now is take the funky looking board, use my special applicator pad. More about this in our next video. And apply the finish. It turned out to be the exact consistency we wanted it to, see? Just like a stick of butter. So uh, it's dried, we've wiped off the excess with a clean cotton rag. It feels just like the other one, but we'll see. So we're gonna start to torture test these boards. And by torture test, I mean rubbing cheese and ham into the boards and then washing them off and then repeating that process until we can't feel a difference between the finished boards and the raw wood board. Chew it, dude. Enjoy it. All right, so I have a piece of sharp cheddar here and I have a piece of ham, and that's what we're gonna use to test these out. So I'm gonna rub the cheese here on this side and ham on this side. That's getting all gross. All slimy, covered in ham. All right, so now we're gonna rinse these off and wash them with a sponge and water, just no soap. 
So I'm gonna talk a little bit about why soap is bad for cutting and serving boards. It strips the finish off, but the reason why is soap is essentially a two-sided particle. This is a gross oversimplification. And it basically has two halves to it. One half bonds with oil really well, and the other half of it bonds with water really well. And then once there's oil attached to one side of the molecule and water attached to the other side of the molecule, the whole thing is relatively inert. So the water just sort of picks it up and carries it off. And most dirt and germs are either oil or water soluble. So the whole idea is that all the grime and grease and dirt gets attached to the oil side of the molecule and the water makes it inert, grabs it and flushes it down the sink. Now, why you don't wanna use it on a serving board is because most of the time we use oil finishes, whether that's mineral oil or wax. Um, those are not water soluble, but they're oil soluble. So if you're putting soap on your board, you're, you're asking the finish to attach to one end of the soap molecule and then you're also washing it away with water. So it's taking your finish off because it's bonding to both the oil in the finish and the water that's washing it away. So that's why you're not supposed to use soap in a serving or cutting board. One million, zillion, jillion, dillion, cotillion times later. All right, so after extensive testing and cleaning a whole bunch of ham and cheese off these boards, we figured out that the difference between these two is really negligible. We can't tell really which one is holding up better, which one has more or less finish left on it. The water is beating up pretty much the same on both, which honestly is longer than we were expecting it to last because we're torture testing it. Like we're really scrubbing it and we're doing round after round after round. So what that means for us is we can't really tell the difference between the two to one ratio board and the three to one ratio board. But what's most important is they're both doing way better than the control is. They're both way smoother. They've definitely still got some sort of protective finish on them. If we choose to use the three to one ratio now instead of two to one like we were planning, that just saves us money on wax. Wax is the most expensive part of this finish. So if we can use less of it overall, that just makes the product less expensive for us to produce. So we'd love to think we were giving the customer a better value by putting more wax on each board, but it doesn't seem like it's making a difference at all. These are all ash and they're all from the same board. So we're not going between different wood grains and having anything throw us off. These are literally the same three boards. 145 degrees freedom height is when beeswax melts, um, which is great because the average temperature inside of a hot car in Houston in the summer is approximately 300. So uh, 145, that's pushing it, but I think we'll be totally fine. I can't really see any of these during shipping or in delivery getting above 145 degrees Fahrenheit for an extended period of time. That's just the melting point. So you have to be at that temperature for a long, long time um, because science, because temperature, if you're in an environment where it's 145 or 150, you're all, the beeswax is gonna approach that temperature, but it's never actually gonna reach it. So um, it has to get hotter than 145 degrees to actually melt. Anyway, I don't think we're gonna run into any issues there in the mail or otherwise. All right, so now we're gonna do something really crazy. It's gonna make your skin crawl and you're gonna wanna jump through the screen and strangle us, but we're gonna put them all in the dishwasher. People will still do it no matter how many times we tell them not to or tell them not to on the website or a card or whatever, they're still gonna do it. So we wanna be prepared for it and kind of know what it looks like and what happens to the board. So we know what to expect when the customer calls and they're angry because their board has no more finish left. Open her up. This is the moment of dishonor. Oh, they're steaming. Ooh. This is not good. All right, so as horrible as I feel saying, I just took these out of the dishwasher. I just took these out of the dishwasher, and this is what they look like. So this was our control board with zero finish. 
This was our three to one ratio and this was our two to one ratio. But all the wax has been melted off. All the hot water in the dishwasher melted away and these are not in good shape. Really all that's left that's keeping them from being what this control board is, is that little bit of oil that seeped a little bit deeper into the board itself. But otherwise they're in rough shape. They need a full refinish. So I say it's a pretty successful test. Um, mm -hmm. I think we determined that we're just gonna stick with the uh, three to one ratio like we have been. That'll be the next video where we show you nightmare scenarios and we're gonna show you how we plan to address those. So yeah, how we're gonna handle the fact that we know people are gonna put them in the dishwasher. So thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button if you're still around and uh, subscribe if you haven't. We put yeah. out videos uh, semi-regularly about us starting a furniture business in the Houston area and we'd love to have you follow along as we learn and try and fail and grow and uh, hopefully build a furniture empire one day. We so. don't always put our creations in the dishwasher, so this is not a regular thing. No, this is just a test. <laughs> so, all right, thanks. Bye.